Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ, and today we are doing another Bible study. I'll be sharing things that are in my heart right now. Um, I was just watching a teaching video, and these things came came very strongly on my heart. And today we are speaking probably mostly about authority and how to pray with authority or in the power of Christ. So a little bit about prayer. And of course, there are many, many kinds and many ways of prayer. This is not exclusive, but this is about power and authority in prayer. So we'll be visiting a couple of scriptures first. The first scripture we'll be reading is from Matthew on chapter 18, verse 18, around there. And I start by reading that. And this is slightly out of context, but I believe it is still relatively in context. Um, XV, yeah, actually very powerful uh, start there as well in the scripture. I just happened to glance here, but like, let's just read this because it is so powerful. Uh, Verily I say unto you, except you turn and become as children, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall submit himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That is powerful, and that is actually what we are talking about today, uh, about submission and submitting uh, yourself to Christ and therefore receiving his power as well. But it it is very like we enter in as children. We cannot be self-determined. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it is very interesting how I just happened to look at this one scripture and it already speaks the same matter. But anyway, a little later here in verse 18, Jesus speaks, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree in earth in any manner of thing whatsoever they shall desire, shall be given them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So a little bit backwards um, ordering here, but let's come basic points here. So first of all, what is needed is two or three, or I guess slightly more is okay as well, gathered together in the name of Jesus. And that's important that we'll be visiting that later as well, or uh, going deeper into that. And when we pray, as I would say, the church, in the name of Jesus, then we will receive what we pray for. So whatever we ask is fulfilled. And there's logic to that. There's reason to that. And let's first look at what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. Many people just, uh, well, many people have very confused ideas about what this means. Some people think that um, praying in, or in the name of Jesus is something that you are in a church building and because it has this cross over here, you're doing things in the name of Jesus. I guess to, to some extent you are, but I don't think that's the reality of the matter. That might correlate with that, but it's not quite that. Other people think that, you know, just you pray whatever here and they just end with the, in the name of Jesus. And now you pray in the name of Jesus. That's not it either. It's not some magic word. Neither is it a magic word in deliverance, mind you, although the demons might like fear it, might, might go for your bluff, I guess, in that sense. But that's not really uh, praying in the name of Jesus. That's bluffing, I think. What it is to pray in the name of Jesus is, um, let's use a metaphor first. So I could use a power of attorney and authorize, for example, my wife or some of my friends 
to do something for me. For example, this uh, power of attorney, attorney could say that you're authorized to retrieve this one item from this one shop in my name. It is as if you, or, or is it? It is as if I personally came and took the item, but you're representing me with this power of attorney. It shows that I have authorized you to do this. So when the person goes into the shop and into the counter and presents this power of attorney and says, I would like to receive this and this item. And they look at it and they say, okay, here it is. Because they recognize that you are there in the name of that person. And you are appropriately representing that person. And if you would go in your own name and you're like, hey, I'm Thomas, I would like to get this item. And they're like, well, this item is assigned to Mikko. Um, I cannot give this item to you. And then Thomas is like, why? I mean, <laughs> it, it's um, you're not going in the name of the person receiving the item. So then you won't receive the item. Same thing here. <laughs> like, pretty funny thing, but if you pray in the name of Jesus, adequately representing Jesus to the Father, will not Father answer the prayer of Jesus? Well, Father will look at the prayer uh, power of attorney, and he will look at the request. Okay, that is what Jesus would do. Here's the item. And you're, well, in this case, you're not really representing Jesus to the Father because Jesus is representing he, himself to the Father, and probably us as well. But, but, um, <clears throat> but just the idea that um, it is as if Jesus was praying. Similarly, it is as if, or it is basically that Jesus is commanding, binding, losing, whatever. And um, um, just quickly visiting this one scripture, this is from Matthew 28, 18. Uh, and just a little bit kind of um, out of context, I guess. We can check the context as well. But here Jesus is saying to his disciples, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And that all there in Hebrew or Greek in this case means all. <laughs> it's a funny way of saying it, but it means everything, all things, everyone, the whole, any, every, each, you know, all power is given in heaven and in earth. So is it uh, coincidental that she spoke here that whatever you lose on earth, or bind in earth shall be bound in heaven as well, because he has the authority in both places. That's why it works. And actually, let us draw what happens here. And there's more to this than just this principle, but let's first uh, review this principle and then move further. So when we pray as the church, adequately representing Christ, it is as if Christ was praying. And in heaven, I believe, Christ is making intercession for us in front of the throne of God. And well, I guess he's sitting on next to the throne of God or whatever, but but he's representing us, the Father, because we are in him. We are the body of Christ. So we're very much part of Christ. But he's uh, interceding for us here and and when we pray in his name it is it goes through that intercede intercession but when we pray in our own name let's say this this guy here this thomas guy here <laughs> sorry if you're thomas um is praying in his own name here the father but what have you done to the father thomas what have you done <laughs> not much Jesus did everything, and he's the one, he's the one beloved son of the Father, and he's the one the Father listens to. And if you're re in rebellion to Jesus or you're not abiding in him, why would he listen to you? I mean, he might, you know, in, even in Old Testament, he, he would listen, but it's a very different process. Here, because we are in Christ, we automatically get that representation and and power in in the presence of God 
but this Thomas guy here doesn't get it automatically. Um, and really, there's no no comparing anyone with Christ. But similarly, when when we're not praying towards heaven, but let's say losing and binding on earth, as it is described in the scripture, like here's an evil spirit, and you bind it. And what is applied here, it is not the power of this Thomas guy here, because uh, in the book of Acts, for example, you can read that some Jewish, um, what's it called, this demon caster guys, <laughs> they used the name of Jesus, Note, used the name of Jesus to cast out devils, but um, they were not really representing Christ. They were not the body of Christ, and they didn't have the proper authority of Christ. They were just using his name, misusing it, really. But we, as the body of Christ, if we are actually operating as the body of Christ, when we bind, it is the same as if Jesus came on earth literally and bound that demon. So that demon will listen. It is the same thing. And if that demon goes against what you're saying, it is the same that he went against Christ himself. And then an angel comes and cuts its head, head off or whatever, you know. So that's why they listen. But it is based on this uh, connection here. And the connection is very important. So the, the kind of line of command or, or sequence of authority goes like this. There's God, there's Jesus, there's his body. And that is us, two or three or more. And she, God has placed everything under the power of Jesus except himself. Jesus has authorized us to lose and bind, for example, and to ask. And now we operate in that um, power of Jesus. But the other side of that power is submission. So power goes down, directions, directives go down, and guidance goes down, but submission following goes up. So the body of Christ follows Jesus and Jesus follows the God, follows Father. And you can see that in the Gospels that the Son did whatever he saw his Father doing. And the Son, Jesus, was subject to his Father even unto death. He was willing to die on the cross to be in submission to his father, who so loved the, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that no one should perish, but all should have everlasting life in Jesus. So it was God who directed that sacrifice, and Jesus was in submission by uh, fulfilling that will of God. And similarly, we are supposed to follow Jesus even unto death. And in Romans chapter 12, um, Paul writes here, at the beginning of the chapter, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercifulness of God, that you make your bodies a quick sacrifice, that is a living sacrifice. Quick is the word, old English word used for living. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable serving of God. And fashion not yourself like unto this world, but be ye changed in your shape by the renewing of your wits or mind, that you may feel what thing that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God is. So here, well, the word I find interesting uh, there is your reasonable service. And that is really the submission. But what is happening there? You're presenting your body as a living sacrifice. So I submit my body to your will. I will do what you say or what you will. So Jesus can give directions through his Holy Spirit. And your will, empowered by the Holy Spirit, fulfill those direct directives. And of course, having the Holy Spirit within you 
here is crucial. It, you cannot get anything done without it. But that is what enables us to pray uh, in the power of Christ, who has all power in earth and in heaven. But here lies the problem. The problem is that this uh, sequence of command here is broken often. Uh, Jesus is subject to the Father, but we are not always subject to Jesus. And instead of being subject to Jesus, we perhaps worship some other god, perhaps mammon, perhaps the state, perhaps something else. And instead of building the kingdom of God, let's call this kingdom of God, we are building the our own little kingdom. And this is what we are contributing towards. And here a life is fulfilled about what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we clothe ourselves with, uh, where shall we sleep, you know, what shall we get some money from. That is what our mind is occupied. And our directives come from people who have the money. So really we are serving mammon in this case. And now uh, we are kind of in an adulterous relationship with Jesus. And we even have the balls to go to him in prayer and ask, like, give me the power so that I can build my kingdom better. It's like, no, that's not how it works. His power that comes here is for building the kingdom of God. And of course, Jesus might be your friend and he would say, yeah, I guess I like your little project here. I'll give you the power to build your own kingdom. But what about the father? Is he going to like that? And Jesus certainly isn't going to go against his father. Because even if he did, there goes the power. So even if he gave you the power, he would um, not have that power because he would be in rebellion against God. So, I mean, and that's completely hypothetical case anyway. So, um, Jesus is subject to the will of his father and he's, he's about building the kingdom of God. This is his, his goal, because this is the Father's goal. But now, if this is your goal, um, are you going to receive the same power and same authorization to building your own kingdom when you're working in your own thing here? You're not really abiding in Jesus, abiding in the wine. Like in John chapter 15, like we spoke in an earlier teaching. No, you're, you're kind of here detached from the vine and doing your own stuff and lacking the power of God because you're not attached. You're not attached to this submission power cycle. And unfortunately, that's where we find ourselves too often. And we really need to make a course correction here and repent. And it starts from understanding who we are, that who we are in the family of God, who we are as the body of Christ, who's our le real allegiance, uh, where's our real allegiance to, at least supposed to be, as the body of Christ. What is the nature of our spirit? And who does it serve? Because our spirit always serves Jesus. The question are we presenting our body as a living sacrifice as well? But when we start to get those basics right, who we are, what we have, and what we are here to build, then we can start actually operating in the power of God. And um, that's where the whole thing will be tested. Will, the, will there be power? Will God show his power through us? And will he confirm the word with signs and miracles and wonders following? That's the question. But 
when we are in that power, we can ask anything and we will receive. Yeah. And we have the power to heal, we have the power to cast out devils, we have the power to raise the dead. If we only believe and and stay there. Anyway, that's a very fast paced sharing of some ideas, but I hope this helps you to set the foundation right that what is required for effective praying in authority and power. And if you have any thoughts or ideas or comments or questions, share them in the comments section or otherwise. And I hope to see you next time.